You are listening to Amplify Your Success Podcast, episode 156. And today we're going to tackle how to break free from your upper limits. So let's get started. Welcome to the Amplify Your Success Podcast. Hey, are you a thought leader, creative entrepreneur, or change maker and want to magnify your impact, boost influence while creating a financial abundance? Stay tuned for today's inspiring episode with your host, Melanie Benson. Hey there, inspired entrepreneurs and business leaders. It's your host, Profit Amplifier, Melanie Benson. And before we dig into today's episode with my special guest talking about upper limits, do you know when you're hitting your upper limit? And do you know how it impacts your business? the results you're achieving, the decisions that you're willing to make to grow your business. I'm going to push on you a little bit today because we're ending a decade soon and we're starting a new decade. And one of the things that becomes so in our face at this moment is this idea that we have a dream, we have a goal, we have a vision for ourselves, but somehow it's dormant. Or maybe you have this unrest, you feel unsettled and everything that you try to create for your business doesn't quite seem to fill that void. And oftentimes that's because you're not leaning into your superpowers You may just be kind of following the trends and trying to duplicate what other people are doing, or maybe you've worked with a mentor and they've taught you their process, but it never really felt completely aligned. That's what happens when you're not really in your own genius. And so one of the ways to break free and to really like amplify the results in your life, in your business, in your financial flow, to create more growth, but to do it in a way that feels fun and easy, not because it's not work, but because it's in alignment with your real superpowers. And you're not just doing things because you think you're supposed to, you're doing them because they actually are aligned and taking you on a journey to achieve things you never believed were possible. I get so excited when I meet with my Amplify Mastermind members and we map out their new year because Oftentimes, what they think they can achieve is radically different than what they will achieve when I show them how to amplify the power in their business. And I am looking for three more people to amplify their businesses in the new year, to take them to a new level that they never believed was possible through the power of masterminding. My Amplify Mastermind is open for applications. You can find out more about it on the MelanieBenson.com site, or you can go to MelanieBenson.com forward slash Amplify dash mastermind. I will put that link in the show notes for you as well, but you're going to want to move quickly. We will be closing applications very soon. And our first retreat is in February, which is ask anybody who's been in the mastermind. It will blow your mind how powerful it is, how inspired you are, and what we accomplish in two and a half days to level up your business. So reach out, let me know what you need, what your goals are. Let's see if you're a good fit. And whatever you do the last few weeks of this year, prepare yourself I'm going to be doing some special episodes of the podcast. I'm going to be doing some live sessions uh, in my communities. So make sure that you're plugged in. If you're not yet on my list or in the Amplifier Success community, jump in there now so we can get you uh, access to these bonus trainings I'll be doing through the end of the year. All right, let's get into today's episode. Today, I have a guest and we're talking about how to break free of your upper limit in business. Entrepreneurial goals can be a moving target, something Holly Chantel learned firsthand after successfully establishing herself as a business coach and brand strategist that was on track to hit seven figures within her first five years. Everything changed, however, when Holly started a family and she found herself in a deep depression, questioning what she wanted from life and consequently her business. This led to a deep spiritual awakening that resulted in her taking command of her business in a whole new way that suited her life as a mother 
and allows her to make an even bigger impact on the world. Today, Holly's working with experienced service-based professionals who find themselves at this plateau in their business with no clear guidance on where to go next. And this is why I invited Holly to come and talk with me today and let you guys in on this conversation because this is a conversation that's happening behind the scenes with so many people and we need to get it out. And Holly, thank you so much for stepping up to the plate to to share what many people might feel is very vulnerable information, but you're like, let's get it out there in the world. I feel like it's something that people need to talk about and it happens to the best of us. And yeah, if my story can help someone else, then bring it on. Well, you know, I, I bring up the vulnerable piece because it took me years to talk about my journey that was that happened at about nine years in, right as I was cresting that seven-figure mark. And um, it, it was hard to talk about for a while, but yet talking about it gave so many people this, um, it's almost like there was this camaraderie and knowing we weren't alone. So again, mm-hmm. thank you. Um, I was getting the chills reading your bio going like, oh my God, her story is my story. <laughs> So let's talk about what an upper limit is if someone's not familiar with this term. Yeah, so it happens, I mean, in many places in your life, and obviously for your audience, we're we're really talking about business, but it's basically a point where you kind of you can you you plateau and you feel like you're hitting the same obstacles over and over again, solving the same problems over and over again. And in your business, what this might look like is, you know, hitting a point where, you know, you, you've, maybe you've hit that $5,000 a month mark or that $10,000 a month mark, but it's not consistent. And you feel like you're constantly having to solve that problem over and over again. Of how do I get back to there? How do I get back to there? And further along in your business, when you've, you know, you've, you've um, established, you feel like really confident and you're kind of out of that startup phase where you're really figuring things out and you feel like things should be easier, you come up against the same problems that you've had before and they make you feel like a beginner again. Like Mm -hmm. you feel like suddenly, you know, you're not really sure if what you're doing is what you should be doing or you're, you, um, you know, are, are reached a point in your revenue or the number of clients that you're able to handle at once. And it's like, you can't seem to get beyond that. And what happens is, is you, you hit that upper limit and it kind of hurts your confidence a little bit um, that like you can't solve this problem. So you actually, your revenue might start to decline. Um, Things that worked for you before will stop working for you. And this sends a lot of entrepreneurs into a tailspin of questioning themselves, losing their confidence, feeling like maybe they weren't as good as they thought they were. And that's where the upper limit becomes a real problem because this is where even a successful entrepreneur can actually decline and, you know, end up having the exit stage left. And it happens so much more than people realize. Hmm. Yeah, I can relate to that. And I, I see people all the time getting stuck and they can't figure out why they're stuck. And so, you know, oftentimes I think they start trying to solve the wrong problems, right? <laughs> you know, their, their focus is like, oh, I need to work harder. I need to do this or I need to do that. So I'm really curious to, to dig into yeah, this a little bit more. Yeah, or I need to start over, go back to the basics. Yeah. Which is like the general advice is let's go back to the basics, you know, what worked for you before. But the thing is, is that when you've hit that upper limit, it's usually because you've outgrown what worked before and it's time for you to take that take the next step into the next evolution of who you are and what your business is and that's that's actually what like where all the mindset pieces come in is that there's a calling that you have and something bigger that you're supposed to be doing but because of limiting beliefs and blocks and patterns and and maybe other things that are going on in your life you don't believe that you can do that and that's actually what happened to me um I was feeling called into something bigger and for years, but because I, you know, had two babies at home, um, I was having a lot of health trouble, only, you know, able to work a certain number of hours a day, only getting a certain number of hours of sleep at night. I didn't believe that I was ready to step into that. And I, and I kept telling myself, okay, I'm just going to, you know, maintain the status quo, keep doing what I'm doing. And then you know, maybe when the kids are older, or maybe when I feel like I'm a little more rested and in my right mind, then I'll do those things. And what happened was the, what was working stopped working. And it was because I had outgrown it and it had become, 
didn't have the same energy that it did before. And it really was me going through the motions and your audience can sense that. And when your heart's not really in it, they're much less likely to buy in with you, which is a, a, a tricky problem to pinpoint. Um, but once it's clear and once you start taking those steps, things fall into place so much more quickly than you might think. Hmm. I totally resonate with everything you're saying. It's exactly what, what my experience was. And, you know, so I'm really curious, you talked about how, you know, when we keep trying to do things and they're not working, a lot of times there's this confidence setback and mm -hmm. there's this, um, it's almost like we feel like there's this invisible wall <laughs> that we can't get right. past. So how does someone start to build trust in themselves again after they've had repeated setbacks? Yeah, that's, that's a really tough challenge um, because there does like there comes a point um, so I'll, t I'll share my story kind of what what happened for me because I think other people will definitely relate to this is you know my background is web strategy copywriting messaging like though like messaging is my my Midas touch like it's just so easy for me and I had lost all confidence in my messaging because people weren't buying anymore. And so I, I invested tens of thousands of dollars in other people that do what I do, hoping that they, like, they would help me figure out what was going wrong. Like, why, why are my programs not selling? Why are these campaigns not working? Like, why, when I've done these launches before, you know, why am I not getting those same numbers? And, you know, they did their best. They wrote great copy. They had you know, it was all kind of all the same things that I would have done myself, same results. And then I realized it wasn't, it wasn't the message. It wasn't that it was me. And that epiphany alone of just realizing that what I thought was the problem was not the problem was like the first step. And I ended up hiring a, a mindset coach and a, like a spiritual guide, essentially. And she helped me kind of uncover what was actually holding me back. And once you uncover what those limiting beliefs are and where they're coming from, it is, it's kind of like awareness, and awareness is the first step to solving the problem. So once you realize where they're coming from and you allow yourself to start listening to that inner voice again, that voice that you might have shut off because you, you know, stopped trusting it, and you start listening to it and you start. Uh, to separate that fear and like that, that the ego speaking and the fear that's trying to keep you safe and keep you um, bat, like basically keep you in that safe zone and not get hurt again with the separating that from the, that inner voice and that, that inner guidance that's really telling you what you truly want and, and the direction that you really want to be heading. Once you can separate those you can you can start to trust yourself again because you'll start to take baby steps in the right direction and you'll get the response that you felt like you should be getting all along um and even so this was a few years ago when i took that first step and launched the mastermind that i had been sitting on for years and was like wanted to do so bad but didn't think that i could could do it i i think that in that first email where i was talking about it I literally mentioned what I was going through. I, I think it was, I think the email was actually titled something about like the dark night of the soul and just talking about like what I was going through personally and that this was a, this was a, a offering and, a, and something that I've wanted to do for so long, but I'm not sure how it's going to go. And I put it out there like very, like from a vulnerable place, like take it or leave it, you know, and, and I ended up getting eight people within two weeks. Um, signed up into that program and it's still going now and some of those people are actually still in the program um, so it's just like just taking those steps and allowing yourself to be vulnerable and not have to do it completely perfect and you know just keeping an open mind that you know it might work it might not work but it has nothing to do with you and your value it um, you'll begin to build that trust again so I heard two really really game-changing um, principles in there. One is get unattached, right? Like trust mm -hmm. that you're, you're being um, moved in a direction to go towards your goal. But I also heard um, letting go of perfectionism. 
Mm-hmm. Such a big part of what people, uh, I think, holds them back when they're in that scared spot is they're trying to get it perfect. They're trying to not lose something when really they have nothing to lose anymore. It's like you had to trust that you're being guided towards something. So that's yeah. that's very powerful for me. The perfection comes from like I don't want this to fail, and then me know, well, it's because I didn't do this, yeah. or it's because I didn't do that. Like I I knew I could have done that better, and I didn't, mm-hmm. and like that that for me, like, I want there to be no excuses why I failed, (laughs) which almost like sets me up even worse. uh, Because then it's like, if you can get unattached to like, maybe those things don't matter. Like, maybe that's not what, um, you know, what caused someone not to buy, and really come to it from, from that inner place. And and like you said, that unattachment, um, it, it sends a completely different energy in your marketing. And it yeah, takes a lot of pressure off of you. I agree. And on them, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. um, so I want to talk a little bit more about this upper limit because it's so profoundly impactful when you recognize when you're bumping up against an upper limit. And I think no matter what stage of business growth we're in, there's different kinds of upper limits we push up against. Mm-hmm. You talk a lot about how entrepreneurs get stuck at that 10 to 15 K a month, which is really where you're starting to crest that six figures. Mm -hmm. Why do you think they get stuck there? So I think, so let's, so let's talk about upper limits. Like as you're growing your business, when you're setting your goals, you're basically setting your quote unquote upper limit. So when a lot of coaches, expert entrepreneurs, like the the online marketing space, when a lot of those people start, they're thinking, you know, if I could just make $30,000, that would be great. And they set that and that's their upper limit. Then they break through that, but they see that someone else is doing 50,000. So they set that as their next, next goal. And these lower numbers where you, you know, they're like, there's other people that you see in your circle that are doing this. So it's a little bit more believable that you could do it too. Um, you know that, you know, if you had a job, you'd be making X number of dollars. So I just need to replace that. There's, there's less um, blocks to how you're valuing the money and um, how you're looking at those numbers. So you're breaking through those upper limits much more easily. Mm-hmm. Once you crest the six figure level, that for a lot of people is like the holy grail. Like that is like, you have made it. And once you feel like you've made it, it's harder to break through that next upper limit because then you feel like, well, if I do that, then am I being greedy? Am I being one of those people that I don't really admire and don't really want to be? Um, Like, and you start to have all that money crap come up that I'm, you know, you're very, you're, you've talked about before. Um, Like that money mindset piece comes, like becomes a much bigger picture. And so that's part of it is just like the belief that what happens when I get, like, what happens if I grow beyond this, beyond my, you know, meeting my needs. And then there's also the complexity that comes with those higher dollar signs. Um, You, there's infrastructure that needs to be built in your business to support growth. Um, If you're moving, this is also the point where you're moving from doing one-to-one or done for you services into more group and more automated programs. And there's all kinds of beliefs that come with that. Will people get the same value? Um, You know, I need to look, I need to have a lower price because it's a group. And then you're fighting to fill an eight person group when you could have sold a one person one-on-one package and you're actually like putting more time into your business. So there's just a lot of complexity that comes with the changes that occur around that six figure level that make it like a pretty solid upper limit. But the good news is, is that a lot of them are very easy to solve. And it really just takes kind of a, you have to take a step back and look at your business as a whole. So the business as a whole as in the brand. So what is the messaging? Like, is that in alignment with these new offers and this new structure that I want to have? You know, is my pricing right? Um, Do I have the right infrastructure and systems in place to be able to handle growth? Um, And when you take that holistic perspective, you can kind of see where, like, which dials to move in order to get yourself to a stable place so that you can kind of raise, raise the bar a bit. Hmm. Yeah, well said. It's, it's very true. And it's exactly what I've seen happening. And I, I love that um, you've kind of laid this out in such a, 
it's, it's like there's a there's an inner game and then there's like a practical side to it mm-hmm. you know and like you can get stuck on either level right do you do you think there's anything different that happens for people who are maybe stuck in five figures like they haven't even been able to get to that six figure in terms of that upper limit I think that the problems are actually fairly similar so there's usually there's three three core problems that happen no matter where, where you are in your business. Um, it's pr- like, it's pretty simple. It's one of the, one of these three things is the problem that's keeping you from growing beyond where you are. It's either a messaging issue. So either you are, uh, the marketing that you're putting out there is speaking to the wrong audience. Um, so you might have your target audience, but you might not be speaking to uh, the people that can afford your services, like there might be a, just a few nuances in the language um, that if you were to just change a few words in your messaging, you'll attract just a different type of client. Um, so there might be a messaging problem. Uh, that's one. The other one is a sales and marketing problem. So if you are getting a lot of your business from referrals, for example, uh, which is how a lot of people get started, especially in those one-to-one services, where you're getting a lot of your business through word of mouth, but now, you know, you want to expand that or you want to reach more people than the small circle that you've been playing in and you need to show up in new places and matching up like the right, the right marketing methods for you and showing up in the right places. Um, So it might just be, you know, expanding that circle and marketing in the right places. Um, So that's two. And then the third one is business model. So the business model being, um, you know, the one-to-many, one-to-one, how your programs are delivered, um, you know, the systems and processes that you have in place, do you have a team, like those kinds of things. Um, it's usually the problem is in one of those three areas, and, but they're all interconnected. But once you solve the first one, everything else kind of falls into place pretty easily. Hmm. Yeah, well said. So here's what I'm super curious about. And I'm imagining as someone's listening in today, they're probably <laughs> get coming into this like, okay, how do we pivot the business? And, you, you know, like I'm assuming that sometimes these strategies may feel like, all right, well, now I have to stop doing what's working so I can start doing something else. And there's this fear of letting go what they're clinging on to, right? Like this one little thing's working over here and I'm clinging to it. Yeah. So what would your advice be, you know, to, to pivot the business without cannibalizing what's working? Yeah. So this comes up a lot. Like even when I'm working with um, the people in my trailblazers collaborative who are making these, these pivots and these shifts, like my first word of advice is don't stop what you're doing. Like don't stop what is bringing in revenue while you're setting up these other pieces. Cause it's really tempting. Like once you see what's on the other end of the tunnel, it can be so tempting to kind of like, I don't really want to do these other things anymore. <laughs> like, yes. let's just push those off to the side. Like, this is what I really want to focus on. And the problem with that is, is that sometimes, depending on how big the pivot is, it might take time to build traction for the new, the new piece to take off. And you need to be, re- you need to be generating revenue in the meantime. Otherwise, you know, you're going to end up in a really difficult place where it's, it's kind of like a do or die situation. And that's not where you want to get yourself into because you can't be unattached to the outcome. If you're, you're, you're scared for your, you know, not having enough revenue to pay the bills. Um, so what I recommend is, you know, keep what you have going, keep what, what is working for you and then start adding in the new pieces. So what that might look like is, um, so uh, for example, if we're going to a one-to-many uh, offering, this is actually this is this is going to be kind of different than what I just said. So <laughs> let me explain. We can, we can have more than one way to get there. Okay, we have more than one way. So, like, because the, there's two different scenarios. Either like you're reaching a new audience, so you might want to build that audience before you, um, you know, completely pivot into there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you might be sharing new topics in your marketing. You might have. Um, start building like a separate email list to the one you have. Like that's like probably the more complex pivot. Um, And I do, I do um, some of those with people that have built a business based on like low hanging fruit and what they thought would work instead of like who they really wanted to work with. And so it's kind of like, it's a pretty big leap into what they really want to do. But let's go, let's talk more simple and probably more, even more relatable to your people, which would be going from a one-to-one model to a one-to-many model. 
you can take the the one-on-one -on -one program that you have and turn it into a group program priced at the same price. And this way you're leveraging your time, like actually leveraging your time, not just creating a group program and you need five people in order to uh, in order to make the same revenue as you would with like one person. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you're still marketing in very similar ways. Um, you're still getting the same number of leads you always have been, but now in, you're, you're filtering them into a more leveraged offer. And the offer, because it's already been proven to sell one-on-one -on -one at this price point, if it's positioned properly, it should sell the same in a group as it did one-on-one. -on -one. And there's ways that you can structure that group so that it's, it's like has an ongoing admission. Um, it, so you, you're not having like a time limit on when people can sign up. Um, and so it can be run with one person when you start out or 20 people as you start growing it. Um, and that's usually how I've, I've done with clients to get them into that one to many. Um, and you'd be surprised at how, simple they are to run and how much value people really do get out of groups. I think we have this belief that like one-to-one -one is king, um, but really groups are where it's at. Um, if, it, if, it's run, if it's run in a way that, you know, people are able to work at their own pace, they get the personal attention they need, which is not hard to provide if you're structuring it the right way. Um, and they, it, it really frees you up to do other things. Yeah, I agree. And I'm glad you gave two scenarios because, you know, we're all different. We're all facing different things. Like I was actually the first person I started literally pivoting my work. And so I had to build an audience that could be more related, relate, relating into this. I kind of niched down and I realized about 40% of my list was not going to be interested in that. Right. And having that right expectation is so important up front, re recognizing it's going to take some time to pivot this message. And um, I wish I had had someone who was as wise in this journey as you were when I was going through that. I think it would have given me a lot more peace of mind to, through this, what can be sometimes very confronting process. And it doesn't right. have to be if you know kind of what you're doing and, and where you're going with it. Yeah. And it, I, I totally hear you. And even just this year I've been doing, because I rebranded at the beginning of the year um, and, and and have been building an all new audience, but I still have you know, my list from the old brand and I marketed them a little bit differently, you know, kind of giving them what they have been expecting. And, and I still have some of the same programs, but I'm also building this, this new audience. And so this, these strategies um, are a little bit different. And so like, I'm going through this process right now for, I mean, this is probably my third edition in the last 10 years. <laughs> so like, I, 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 I feel what you're talking about because it's, it's very fresh. Yeah. So if somebody wants to connect with you, um, I think you have something called the blind spot survey that we can s share with our listener today who can maybe take this from an idea into really getting in the meat of it with you. Yeah. So we were talking before about like the three areas of plateau. So the sales and marketing, the business model, or the, the brand and messaging. Mm -hmm. Um, and I have a quiz that'll help you pinpoint like which one is causing the problem. Um, so if you're at a point where you can't seem to grow beyond where you are, or, uh, you know, you feel like you've been doing all the right things, but it's just not working how you thought it should. Um, this quiz will tell you like kind of what the blind spot is and then what the beliefs are behind the blind spot, which is actually more important. <laughs> like, yeah, so the exactly. blind spot, like it'll actually, for most people, it shouldn't actually be a blind spot. It'll be like, oh yeah, I know that I need to be marketing myself a little bit differently or yeah, I know that my brand's a little off. Um, but the, the underlying pieces are actually what's really important, what you can take action on right away. Yeah. Um, well, and that's at growthblindspot.com. Great. Growthblindspot.com. Write that down. Go grab this great, survey, take the survey, find out where your blind spot is. Uh, I love Holly asking my guests one really powerful question as we wrap up, because we do a lot around owning your bold mm -hmm. in our community, because I, I have found that when you are stuck or you're feeling like you've lost that confidence, taking one bold step can really unlock a lot of momentum. Mm -hmm. What was the boldest move you had to make to get where you are today in your business? 
I think that the boldest move has actually been this year, uh, which was that the rebrand of really bringing in more aspects of myself. I felt, I feel like for the last, you know, the last nine years, um, I'd been kind of hiding behind my, my brand and my, my business name. And I wasn't really bringing in any, any personal aspects of me, like the metaphysical beliefs and like the, the spirituality and those kinds of things um, that play a role in behind the scenes in my business. And that many of my clients know about me, like once they've gotten to know me and bringing that to the forefront <clears throat> and really sharing more of who I was and, and um, more of the whole picture of, of Holly Chantel has been, it was a huge step, <laughs> a huge, like kind of identity um, reveal uh, that just this year. And, you know, that's after being in business for a decade already. Um, and it's been, it's really exciting. And, and the, the, uh, it makes you feel a lot freer and uh, like it makes things much easier <laughs> when you're able to just be yourself. Yeah. You're in flow. Like you're, and yeah. yeah, you're not trying to figure out how do people want to see me so I can make sales. It's no, this is who I am. This is the most authentic version of me. And that becomes the magnet. Yeah. I think before, like I said, I was hiding behind the brand and um, you know, I'm big, like I've been doing branding work this whole time for, for my clients. And a big piece that we work on is personality. And I had chosen aspects of my personality that come out when I feel like I'm at my best, mm -hmm. but are sometimes difficult to maintain, which is that like extrovert, playful, like kind of jokester person. And now I'm able to kind of settle into the more quiet Holly and the, the more intellectual and spiritual and those fun, you know, extroverted things come out still, but it's not, it doesn't have to be all the time like it was before, which has made things much easier. Yeah, I totally get that. Thank you so much for joining me today and sharing this wisdom and sharing about your journey, which I think so many people can relate to. And again, I want to encourage our listeners to get the blind spot survey. And could you give that URL one more time? Yep, it's growthblindspot.com. Great. And uh, as you're listening in, if you want to keep this conversation going, make sure you come into the Amplify Your Success community. And let's talk about blind spots and take, you know, take the survey, you know, join uh, Holly in her programs, but let's keep this conversation going because there's something really, really valuable about being willing to share these parts of ourselves. It takes the, uh, it takes the, this perfectionism off the table and helps us be more real as human beings in business. And I think we're really seeing a major shift in our community around that right now. And Holly, thank you for being a champion of that out in the world. Yeah, thank you for having me. This is Melanie Benson, your host. Thanks so much for listening in today. If you want to catch up on any of the show notes and circle back on any of the resources we shared in today's show, head on over to the show page at AmplifyYourSuccessPodcast.com. And remember, you amplify your results faster when you're in a community of other people who are moving and shaking join us at AmplifyYourSuccessCommunity.com. One last thing, when you've gained insight from today's episode, help us share that and inspire other people by heading over to iTunes, subscribing, and give it a review. iTunes absolutely loves seeing these reviews pop up, and it actually helps boost my show's visibility. So I would be super grateful for your reviews. And as always, I love seeing your shares of these episodes on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Come find me over there. Tag me in your shares. I'll give you some social media love right back. So see you next week for another inspiring episode of Amplify Your Success Podcast.